This is the second video lecture on aesthetic finishes. Aesthetic finishes are an applied design. So they offer a, a visual or textural or, or hand or other aesthetic component to a fabric. The finishes tend to be done to enhance the marketability of a fabric in, in some way. And they often are quicker and less expensive than building um, structure into a design in some way or less expensive than structural designs. So they're applied after a particular fabric is made. So let's look at a few, few other finishes. Uh, laser cutting um, is something that you can see across the board and you can see it in um, very expensive clothing and you can see it used in, in your fast fashion. Laser cutting uses um, essentially high energy light beams to, to cut fabric. It's particularly um, successful when you have fabrics that don't fray when you cut them. Things like ultra suede and, and fleece are two examples of fabrics that you can cut and they wouldn't fray along the edges. It um, has extreme accuracy, so you can get really complex shapes into it. It does very clean cuts and it can seal the fabric edges, especially with if you're using synthetic or thermoplastic fibers. You can use it across many fibers. They have the technology to do that. But um, on thermoplastic fibers, when you cut it, the, the edges uh, seal as it melts. And you can imagine what a time-consuming and planned out process this would be by hand. And it can be very quickly done with a, a computer-controlled laser. Most cutting is actually done with CO2 lasers um, or lasers that create infrared light. And so those um, melt or vaporize along a line that, that's guided or computer controlled. Uh, there's one particular synthetic that we don't like to laser cut and it's PVC. So if you've used it, even the, the laser cutters on campus, they'll have warnings against using PVC because it, the off gas from cutting PVC is really harmful to our health. Lasers, um, because of their precision, also can emboss. And so um, they can just work on the, the surface of a fabric to make a design. So it just cuts into the surface um, and can do it very precisely at, at very small um, distances. This is really quick and inexpensive. You can create 3D patterns on things, especially nice when you have a little pile across a surface. Um, so your fleeces will have that uh, fuzzy pile on it and lasers can emboss logos or, or figures onto that. A place where lasers might be used to, to cut out patterns are on eyelet embroidery. So eyelet um, holes are cut in a fabric. It can be done with a knife. It can be done by hand or with scissors or by laser. And then the embroidery is added. And so it keeps the, the fabric from fraying along those holes, but you can see it adds this particularly intricate and beautiful design to it. So this is interesting because it's both a subtractive and additive finish. In laser cutting, you're just subtracting. You're subtracting fabric. Um, with a machine. But in eyelet embroidery, you're subtracting fabric, but then adding embroidery to the edge or using thread to um, go across the edges of the design, the places where the holes were cut, to um, magnify those designs, but also keep it from fraying or from the fabric from actually coming apart, which would happen the worst when if it was being washed. There's also something called applique. Applique um, is an ornamental needlework where pieces of fabric in different shapes and patterns are somehow sewn or stuck onto a larger piece to form a picture or design. An applique can be done by hand or machine, but you're taking fabric 
cutting it into a design and then applying it to another piece of fabric. So what you're seeing on, in these pictures are applique. The, the heart shape was cut out of a felt and then it was just stitched onto this white fabric. Um, same here, you have batik pieces that were cut and applied to a larger fabric. There's also reverse applique, which has an interesting, and in this case, a, a very ethnic looking effect. Um, mola, you're looking at mola cloths, which are particular cloths that come from a particular reason, but it's a, a particular region. But it is a reverse applique. Here we have several layers of cloth. Usually you can just have two layers like you here, see here, but it can go up to seven layers of different colored cloth usually it's a cotton and those are sewn together and then the layers are cut away and um, the largest pattern in the top layer um, the largest pattern is in the top layer and then it gets progressively smaller as you go down or cut down through the layers and so you cut the pattern the edges are, are typically uh, turned under and sewn down this was a, a traditional part of women's clothing of the Kuna that is a indigenous group from Panama. They originally were inspired from um, body painting that they did um, uh, and it had really naturalistic kind of themes like flowers, sea animals, or, or birds. We had touched on embroidery just a second ago with eyelet embroidery using um, cutting or laser cutting and then embroidering around the the holes that were formed. When we talk about embroidery it, it's still very much done by hand in in places. The the roots of embroidery are really ancient in every culture having some form in their textile history. But embroidery is essentially stitching a decorative thread um, on a fabric surface by machine or hand. It can use one or more colors to create the design and is used across the board on textiles. You'll see it on jackets and hats and um, it's used to create crests or logos, um, a whole range of, of features that you can embroider on a fabric. What we're seeing here is a particular Shifley embroidery that's a machine process. Um, it can make a wide range of very complex um, embroidered surfaces and it looks like an intricate lace treatment. Um, the, it, it's computer controlled and very fast. It makes a strong, more abrasion resistant uh, fabric. It's typically done with a polyester type of sewing thread. Um, but it's very precise and uh, tends to have repeating patterns like you see here. And that's um, what you can identify as a machine process in that um, it, the, the pattern is homogeneous across the, the fabric itself um, and it um, is very regular. Cruel embroidery then is refers to more of a hand process. So this is done by hand. It uses typically or traditionally it uses wool or acrylic yarn as the embroidery thread across the surface and you can imagine as a hand process, it's mu much more expensive than you would see in a um, machine process. But you can recognize it because of the, the all the different stitches that are on here. Of course, we have different colors, but the stitches are not regular. They're not just filling in um, pieces of the design with embroidery. You actually see uh, a, a range of different types of stitches to enhance the texture across the surface. And of course, um, across uh, haute couture, you'll see all different kinds of embroideries employing all different kinds of materials. It is seen in this in this light as a sculptural application of elements. You can have glass beads, sequins, gold thread, feathers, jewels. Here we have examples um, from a Charles Worth gown uh, of early embroidery that was really extravagant across the surface using gold threads. 
um, and beads, a McQueen type of embroidery across a collar that was used, um, a sh oh, this I think is a, a Dior type of embroidery. So um, it's been used over time in many different ways to uh, embellish um, one of a kind type of fashions. Sequins you may be familiar with. Um, sequins are disc shaped beads essentially. They used to be made from shiny metals, but mostly today you'll see sequins made out of plastic. They, in your um, more designer, um, one of a kind type of garments, they would be sewn on by hand. But most of our cheaper imitations are done much more quickly. You can take a, a string of sequins that are sewn on um, at the ends of those strings or individual sequins, sequins that are glued on to a fabric. Glued on sequins have a, a much higher chance of falling off during wear and care. Even though it's a much cheaper process, um, the glue, uh, it's more likely to, to under wear and tear and, and care uh, to not hold over time. And it actually adds a kind of heaviness and weight to the fabric as well. There's, of course, a, a huge difference on quality and price point, depending on how many sequins you have on a garment, um, as to whether they were, it was a hand process. Beading is similar to sequins. It, it's um, a type of embroidery as well, uh, where you're using thread to put on a 3D surface interest on a fabric. It's applied, beads of course are applied similar to sequins. Uh, you can create an all over texture with beads or make a unique type of symbols on it or figure designs or accents. But beads uh, of course can also be glued to a fabric. And so those are significant differences in uh, the quality of a surface design. We can also modify a fabric's texture in more dramatic ways and create very three-dimensional type of effects. One thing you'll see to create a whole different aesthetic effect across a fabric is pleating. This, um, I'm sure you've had or may have had seen a, a garment that has these folds across the surface. It's a type of fold that's formed by doubling fabric back on itself. And then somehow um, using heat or pressing it to, to stay in place. This, um, what we see here are two different types of pleats. There's more than this, and we'll look at a third one as well. But when you put a, a pleat into a garment, it's often ironed or heat set to maintain that crease across it because pleats can be softened as you care for a garment. But what you see here, uh, the most familiar pleats may be knife pleats. And so knife pleats are just taking a large garment and then regularly um, fold, making these folds in it or these lines in it. So you can imagine how, how much this fabric opens up or how large it has to be to create that effect. Um, and it's meant to create uh, the ability to, to move in a garment that still looks um, very straight along the body. Box pleats are just knife pleats that have put, been put back to back. There's a special type of pleating called crystal pleating. So these will look like knife pleats to you, but they're very small where knife pleats might be one inch large. These are much smaller as you can see in the garments that I show here. And they are narrow, sharply pressed pleats that are all um, pressed in one direction typically. And it's typically used or done on fabrics that have thermoplastic fibers. And so they can lie flat and they, um, when they lie flat, they overlap much like you might see in uh, vertical blinds. Smocking is another type of embroidery method that changes a garment by gathering a section of the fabric into very tight pleats and then 
holding them together with parallel stitches in an ornamental pattern. So this is just kind of a sampler where you see the, the fabric has been folded into these very tight lines or pleats, but then they've used different stitches to hold those folds together. And so you create these ornamental designs, um, but have this, this surface of lines across the front of it. Smocking um, was intentionally added, was intentionally done to add stretch before we had elastic. It was used in cuffs and bodices and necklines to make uh, garments fit better across um, a wide range of bodies. But now you see smocking used very decoratively. Um, this is a honeycomb smocking, which I think is particularly beautiful. And so you still have the, the same lines that you're working with. Um, but it can be accentuated by these, these larger pleats, and then you um, tie them together in a honeycomb pattern. And so it creates this really dimensional diamond effect to, to smocking. Tucks and pin tucks are the same kind of thing in that you see pleats being used. So fab fabric gathered into lines or made into lines. The only difference between tucks and pin tucks is that they are stitched that way. And so they're sewn into place into these lines. Um, so you don't have, you wouldn't have to repress them like you might a pleat because that would take an extraordinary amount of time, especially if you have a, if you have a number of tucks. Pin tucks are just very tiny. Here we'll see tucks happening. I would call these pin tucks um, and that they are very narrow, like your crystal pleating. And then gathering or shearing or ruching. So gathering is a technique where a longer piece of fabric is shortened to have it attached to a shorter piece of fabric around a waistline. Um, imagine a full skirt that's attached to a bodice or a full sleeve, a very billowy sleeve that's attached to a cuff. So you can use gathers to kind of gather that fullness and, and fit it around the body. Shearing is gathering with elastic thread, which creates a more stretchy type of garment. And so if this thread was elastic there, it would help it to be more body fitting around the gather. And then what you see here is a form of ruching and that two or more parallel lines of gathers are put together. Um, and so also I would say that there's some shearing happen, sh happening here to really form it around the body. And of course, many of these methods of manipulating the surface or adding 3D effects to the surface of a fabric can be combined together to make um, interesting garments. And so here we see box pleats combined with a little honeycomb smocking. Here we see tucks happening in several directions. Um, pleats down here with applique on the top. So again, in this lecture, I want you to walk away with understanding the, the purpose of aesthetic finishes, what they add to a garment. Um, whether you would consider, consider them finishes that are additive or subtractive in some way, and then what that finishes change, what the finish changes about a product. So why go to the the trouble of it? Is it really looking at the appearance? Does it have a quality implication? Are there performance implications as well?